My guest is Natalia Gavrilica, the Prime Minister of Moldova's new Western-oriented government. The country has been struggling with instability, corruption and rising poverty for many years. Now her aim is to reform Moldova and also to bring the country closer to the EU. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Good to be here. You chose Brussels as the destination of your first trip as the country's new prime minister. What is the message you are bringing to the European Union? Our message is that uh, Moldova uh, has a renewed energy, uh, a renewed enthusiasm for uh, fighting corruption, for improving institutions, for ensuring the rule of law, uh, for um, ensuring economic stability and economic growth. Uh, in summary, for ensuring that we get closer to the European values, the European standards and the European way of life. In the history, we have seen that Moldova is hesitating between the Russian-orientated government or a Western-orientated government. Do you think that the current pro-Western wave will last and how will you make it last? We won uh, in a landslide victory. Um, on, on a largely domestic agenda, not uh, choosing between the East and the West, but rather choosing for an improved uh, uh, life for the citizens of Moldova. Uh, so uh, the citizens of Moldova are tired of uh, governments who lie, of politicians who steal, of uh, public services that do not work for the people, of uh, decisions that do not take account of the public interest. Um, and what they have said in these elections is that um, they want to... Uh, they want a government uh, who, who they can trust. Uh, and this means uh, a government that every day takes decision, uh, having in mind the public benefit and not uh, the benefit of uh, a few. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, uh, is this a pro-European, uh, pro, uh, or, or pro-Russian agenda? This is actually a pro-citizen agenda. You have to fight corruption, you have to transform the economy. How will you go ahead on these fields? We, of course, uh, are starting with uh, cleaning up institutions. Uh, so uh, just uh, several weeks ago, uh, we have stopped one large uh, public acquisition uh, that uh, involved uh, uh, siphoning of money, we are cleaning up uh, the leadership and state-owned enterprises, uh, so we are stopping corruption within the government. At the same time, uh, we are starting to work on legislation to uh, improve the accountability uh, in the judiciary, uh, we uh, improve the accountability of the prosecutor general on performance. Moldova is one of the poorest countries in Europe. What are your intentions to, you know, make economy work better, work for the people? So, um, in the 30 years of uh, instability and uh, rampant corruption, uh, the private sector has also become uh, uh, tainted by vested interests. So, uh, what we're looking to do is uh, dramatically uh, reduce barriers to entry. Uh, so uh, we want to demonopolize fields, we want to improve regulations so that it's easy uh, for various companies to participate. Uh, we are looking at uh, debureaucratization uh, for small and medium enterprises. We're looking at reform of the uh, control function of the government. Um, and of course, we uh, have uh, stability for the next four years where the president, the parliament, and uh, the government are all working in the same direction and uh, we hope to use this opportunity to bring more investment in. Fight against corruption is always very risky. Do you feel secure and do you feel that your government has enough support to go through this fight? We have massive support of the people and this is what inspires us uh, to move forward. Um, I personally uh, do feel secure uh, because uh, we are doing the right thing. Uh, and uh, I am sure that uh, uh, both our citizens and our partners uh, will provide the best protection uh, uh, possible. For the moment, the European Union is not ready for further enlargement. So what are your prospects for the next uh, decades of, of Moldova? I think that uh, uh, European enlargement and European integration is as much of a process 
So uh, we know that uh, we have to do our homework. We know that uh, we have to dramatically improve the way that our institutions work. We have to improve the standards of living of our people. We need to make sure that uh, uh, these uh, European-style reforms are irreversible. Uh, and then we can uh, talk uh, about enlargement. But in the meantime, uh, nothing stops us from uh, cooperating uh, much more profoundly in specific areas. What could be the solution for the breakaway region of uh, Transnistria? We are working on making the right bank of Moldova uh, more attractive for people from the left bank of Moldova. So by uh, improving institutions, by fighting corruption, uh, we are actually um, helping uh, to reach reintegration by um, making it more attractive for people uh, in the left bank. Uh, second, you know, we believe uh, in... Um, cleaning up some of the corruption schemes that existed uh, between the right bank and the left bank. And it was uh, uh, basically a conflict uh, uh, that uh, uh, was also fueled by, or, or rather uh, remains possible, uh, due to uh, profits that were made by vested interests both on the right and on the left bank of the river. Uh, so we are looking to curb uh, corruption in this sphere as well. Would you be ready to sit down with Russian leaders to talk about the issue of their military presence there? We have always made clear, and this stance has not changed over the last 30 years, no matter who was in power, uh, that you know we plead for the withdrawal of the Russian troops. Uh, we also um, want to hasten the resolution of uh, uh, armament that uh, uh, exists on the left bank the, in the Kolbasna region. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, we, we have declared in the campaign uh, that we will have a, a balanced foreign policy oriented uh, or focused on the needs of the citizens, and we are ready to do uh, whatever is necessary to protect the uh, interest of our citizens and the public interest. Prime Minister, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you.